Hey guys and welcome to Aussie Reviews. Today I'm checking out the Glock 17A Gen 4 9mm pistol. So this is the uh, box that it comes in, so I thought I'd show you that. So inside, naturally, you've got the pistol. There's a uh, user manual. It's a warning here about uh, not using uh, Narinco or reloaded ammunition with regards to their warranty coverage. Got a uh, spare magazine and a uh, mag loader. I've got the um, takedown tool. A couple of interchangeable uh, back straps. A cleaning rod and a cleaning brush. Okay, so before I go on with the review, what's the difference between the Gen 3 and the Gen 4 Glock? Now you'll see uh, both models still being sold a lot of the stores here in Australia, but the Gen 4 has an upgraded mainspring or it's a dual recoil spring to be exact. So the design um, and idea behind that is so it reduces the wear and tear on the pistol, but also improves the accuracy. Now we've got these interchangeable back straps as well, so depending on your hand size, you should be able to set that up to your own comfort. We've got this new and redesigned Ambi mag release as well, so depending on whether you're left or right handed, you can just switch that out to your uh, preference. We've also got the new grip texture on it as well. It feels really nice in the hand, so um, I don't think I'll have any problems there. Now with regard to the model number, you know, we've called it the Glock 17A. Now, this is really a designation here for the Australian market, and why I say that is because if you're watching this from overseas, you'll be probably a bit confused, but here in Australia, we have 120 mil uh, minimum barrel length for semi-auto pistols used in sports or competition shooting. So it's gotta be over that. The original Glock 17 was uh, 114 mil or 4.49 inches to be exact um, in barrel length. So obviously it wasn't compliant. So they had to make it that little bit longer and they've made it 122 mils or 4.8 inches to make it compliant. So that's the reason. Still the same cold hammer forged steel barrel that you find in the standard Glock 17. Nothing's changed there. It's just that they've extended it to make it that little bit longer for compliance. Now the overall weight of it, look, it's pretty lightweight because you've got the polymer frame and then obviously the metal um, slide. Uh, 710 grams or about one and a half pounds. So, you know, not too bad, quite comfortable in the hand. Now the magazine that it comes with, this is another restriction that we have, unfortunately, for sports target shooting is 10 round uh, mag limit. So if you do have a uh, collector's license or you're using this in security, primary production or feral pest control, then you're not uh, limited to any of that. So you can take advantage of the high capacity magazines, which go right up to 33 rounds. Now the trigger pull on this, look, really heavy. It's just a standard Glock in my view. Every one of them that I've picked up it's just had a terrible trigger. But look, they really designed these uh, for their main market, which is law enforcement and uh, military use. So obviously they're not gonna have a super light trigger that you'd find in sports um, you know, pistols. So uh, about six pounds, I've measured this one out. Um, we've got a very long uh, take up and then quite a heavy trigger pull from there. So for me, you know, using this for sports use, honestly, I'd be getting like a lighter spring uh, installed or I'd be looking at, you know, an aftermarket trigger just to um, make this a lot better. Now we've got the accessory rail underneath here. So if you want to add a torch, if you're doing um, night shooting or something, you can do that. Or if you're in those areas around the world where you're fortunate enough to be able to have firearms or self-defense, then obviously you want to be putting a torch there, um, you know, for that purpose. One year warranty um, on this. Look, I can't say that I've really come across anyone, even friends that I, I know that have Glocks, that have any real problems with them. They seem to be really robust, and obviously that's the reason they sell so well in the police and uh, military world. So recommended retail on the uh, Gen 4 here in Australia is about $899. Shop around, guys. You can get it um, you know, a little bit cheaper. So the sights on these are just the standard Glock sights. Now they are adjustable for both uh, windage and elevation. You've just got, uh, basically you're just gonna need a very small uh, flathead screwdriver to make those adjustments. 
What I'll show you now very quickly before we head out the range is just the simplicity of um, you know stripping one of these down for field maintenance. So all you need to do is just bring the slide back probably about an inch. There's the tabs on both sides here. All you need to do is just thumb and forefinger, pull down, release the slide, pull the trigger, and off it comes from there. So this is the new spring that I'm talking about there. So very different to their original uh, one on previous models. Barrel just lifts up and slides out. And it's as simple as that. I mean, how easy is that for uh, field maintenance? You just break it down. You can clean all the parts where you're going to have the buildup of carbon. And then it's very straightforward just to put back together. Okay, so we've got that back together. So let's get out the range now. Put a few rounds through this uh, Gen 4 Glock and see what it's made of. Alright guys, so we'll run through the five different types of ammo that I'll put through the Glock today. So first of all, we've got a bulk pack of the uh, Winchester 125 grain lead round nose. Then we've got the uh, Winchester PDX-1 Defender, which is a 147 grain bonded jacketed hollow point. Then we've got some uh, Blaza 115 grain full metal jacket. Then we've got the Federal Premium, which is the 124 grain Hydroshock jacketed hollow point. And then last of all, we've just got the cheaper Highland 115 grain jacketed hollow points. So yeah, we're just going to put a mag through of each, um, just down 10 yards or 10 meters, and. Um, yeah, we'll just see which one the uh, Glock prefers. Okay, so I'll just start off with 10 rounds here, guys. I'm um, just going to shoot into the uh, backdrop here at the range and just get a feel just for the uh, Gen 4 in general, if that makes sense. Okay, so look, there's a long uh, draw on the trigger there, but uh, you can work out the reset fairly easily. You know, um, that felt quite natural to me, to be quite honest. Um, yeah, I'd like a lighter trigger straight off the bat, but uh, in general, pretty comfortable to handle. So let's see how we go with a few groups now. Okay, so we'll take a quick look at the target here, guys. So uh, keep in mind, you know, shooting at 10 metres unsupported, so it's pretty much the same. Um, we started off there uh, with the Winchester bulk pack. Look, not too bad there. We've had 
couple of flyers here and there. Then we come down to the uh, Winchester PDX-1, a little bit better there. The uh, Blazer ammunition seemed to shoot fairly well. That's a, you know, another cheap uh, option for you. Then when we come up to the uh, Federal, look, not too bad there either. And then we come down um, to the Highland, a little bit of spread there. But uh, as I say, look, I'll uh, gladly take it on the chin that the error is in, you know, shooting freehand. So, um, yeah, I think what I'll do now is just load up the lead round nose there from uh, Winchester, the bulk pack, because I want to shoot some steel. So uh, we'll have a bit of fun with that. Okay, so we're back at 25 metres here. Now, there's a lot of talk about Glock. Uh, you know, some people love Glock. Uh, other people don't like it. A lot of people say that it's inaccurate. Um, you know, it's not good for competition use. Etc. Uh, Etc. Et now, whilst a lot of us will have our own thoughts on that, what I thought I'd dispel here is the accuracy myth. Now, I've got a couple of um, steel reactive targets down there, uh, 25 metres away, and all I'm going to do is just shoot freehand, unsupported here, and just see, you know, how long it takes me to be able to knock them down. So, if we've just got 10 rounds of the lead round nose uh, Winchester bulk stuff, and uh, we'll just see how we go. Okay, we're a bit high there, we'll come down. Okay, so there's definitely no accuracy problems there, so let's see how we go with uh, something a little bit faster. So yeah, just as I expected, um, very, very reliable, and that's why these pistols are uh, very popular, you know, for the price. So the magazines are pretty tough and durable, and I've had no dramas with uh, the actual feeding uh, from them. To be quite honest, I think they're pretty reasonably priced too, so if you do wear them out, they're um, readily available. But um, being uh, the laws that we've got here, We've just got the single stack 10 round magazine, but as I say, no problems whatsoever with them. Okay guys, I'm going to wrap up my final thoughts on the Glock 17 Gen 4. Now, I still have pretty much the same viewpoint that I did prior to doing the review about Glock in general. To me, you know, I just don't really like the look of the pistol. Um, you know, it's a bulky, very square looking pistol. Um, you know, however, I have to be honest when I review it, and the honest truth is it's ultra reliable and it gets the job done and that'd be why it's so popular with so many police departments and military forces across the world now for our use in uh, competition shooting i mean look ultra reliable so you've got that reliability there um, the one thing that you've just pretty much <laughs> have to change in my view is the trigger um, yeah, it's just terrible um, i haven't used a glock pistol yet where I've gone, wow, that's a nice trigger. So unfortunately for me, I definitely want a lighter spring um, or replace the entire trigger with something like a Zev trigger or one of those um, you know, complete replacement triggers that's going to give you that nice, beautiful, uh, crisp, light trigger that you want for sports use. But look, apart from that, guys, you know, it feels good in the hand. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a typical polymer pistol. You know, um, the interchangeable back straps, I mean, I'm happy with this one, but you want to change that for your different uh, size hand or, or, you know, whether you're wearing gloves or whatever, you can find the one that's most comfortable and most suitable for you. So, look, for the price and everything like that, guys, um, you know, they're a pretty good pistol. They take a lot to beat. The only thing is you just got to replace that trigger on them. All right, hope you enjoy the review, guys. So till next time, we'll catch you then.